Copyright laws apply to all contents of this video. Hello, Jamar Studios here, and this is our original fantasy action adventure, Like Water, The Next Age. Episode 9 For a while, it was like I was trapped in a cloud of darkness. Then there was a sudden explosion of lights, and there they were, taking care of me. Barnabas saw the monster I had become but treated me like family. Even Eyes, who at first seemed hard and aloof, clearly showed she would protect me, a stranger, at the expense of her own life. This is why I decided to follow them instead of staying in the community of hope. We travelled for three days before coming to a camp, where up to 40 very hard up looking people, men, women and children, were forced to watch no holds barred fighting in a large circular pit alongside a hundred bandits. It's okay, Ruby. We won't let anything happen to you, said Barnabas to me, seeing the fear that took hold of me when I saw the bandits who were like the ones who destroyed my orphanage. When we approached the pits, a young and strong-looking Caucasian man with a shaved head, dressed in rags, was fighting a bandit with knives attached to chains. The young man's fighting skills were impressive, as the bandit, who was extremely dangerous, was unable to touch his opponent, who in, a, who in turn was able to hit him a lot until the bandit was on the floor unconscious. All the hard up people cheered for joy. He's done it, again. We're going to eat today, said the hard up woman who stood near us. Well done, David. Your victory means the people here will not only live for another day, but will be able to eat today, said the large bandit, who seemed to be the organizer of the event. The young man responded with a look very similar to the one Ice gives regularly. How would you like a chance to secure these people's food and freedom for a whole month? Asked the large bandits. Who would I have to fight? Asked David. Ah, there lies the catch. For this opportunity, you would have to accept the challenge without knowing who your opponent would be, stated the bandit, who was clearly enjoying himself. I accept, said David. Fantastic yelled out the bandits, which caused his men to open the entrance to the arena which allowed, allowed the man to walk in wearing a bionic exoskeleton suit that made him nine feet tall with the artillery of a modern tank. David, totally unprepared to be this ridiculously outmatched, could only stare as his opponent began to rain down bullets at him, which were blocked by Ai's sword as she jumped in in front of him. Whoa, 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 let's all take a deep breath and remain calm cried out Barnabas as he jumped in the middle of the pits. I'm very calm. She's the one that is interrupting the bout, said the large bandit while stopping his men from attacking with a hand gesture. She means no disrespect. It's just this gentleman clearly is unable to defeat your fine-looking warrior, responded Barnabas. Not my problem. He agreed to the terms, stated the bandits. How about I fight your man instead? said Barnabas, which in turn caused all the bandits in the area to laugh hysterically. No problem, said the large bandit, after just about being able to compose himself. If I win, then you will have to let all these people leave safely for good, added Barnabas. Whatever you say, said the large bandit. The armored up bandit, not even allowing Eyes and David to leave the arena, began to load up his gun ready to fire. Barnabas, with just a flicker of his finger, caused the armor to fall to pieces until all that remained was the bandit standing before him, totally unarmed and confused. Barnabas then smiled and proceeded to knock him out with a kick to the head. How did you do that? asked the large bandit, who by now was visibly unhappy with what had just transpired. It doesn't matter how I did it. All that matters now is that you let all these people go as agreed, responded Barnabas. Tell you what. I will let these people go if you're able to survive, said the large bandit, then allowing his men to attack. Barnabas, mainly focusing on preventing the loss of innocent lives, began to do battle with all the surrounding bandits. While eyes, showing no mercy, began to execute every bandit that chose to attack her or an innocent bystander in her vicinity. David also used his fighting skills to do battle with bandits and was unable to incapacitate a few while being protected by Barnabas's programming skills. Before long, the few bandits that survived fled 
and Barnabas found himself nodding his head as he viewed the many victims of ICE. The young programmer proceeded to clean up the area and create a nice looking community with a source of clean drinking water and food. A day later, after endowing David with basic programming skills, we were ready to continue our travels. You are an incredible fighter, said David to Ice while he bid us farewell. Don't encourage her, responded Barnabas. That's the end of episode 9, but before we go, answer this episode's question. Was Ice right to intervene, seeing as David had agreed to the terms of the bouts? Give your answers in the comments below as well as on our Facebook and Twitter page. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for the next one. Until then, subscribe to Jamar Studio YouTube channel, add us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. Link to our website on all social media can be found in the description box below. See you later.